All right, let's jump into some calculations with energy intensity and sound level. Uh, first one we're going to look at is <clears throat> if you go to a concert and you are a meter away from a speaker, so you got some pretty good seats, I guess, or you worked your way through the crowd, and the intensity there is one watt per square meter. I mentioned earlier that that is kind of the threshold of pain, as well as you are going to damage your hearing well below that. So we want to find out what distance you should stand from that speaker in order to vo avoid any hearing damage. You can get hearing damage with uh, <clears throat> anything above 3 times 10 to the negative fourth watts per square meter. So we can't handle very much intensity before we're starting to do some damage to our ears, at least not for prolonged amounts of time. So the equation we're going to use on this one is our good old I1 over I2 equals R2 squared over R1 squared. Remember that they're reverse, so the ones go diagonally and the twos go diagonally. Don't get that screwed up. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you call one and which one you call two, but just because we were given it first, we'll go ahead and take the one meter and the one watt as our ones our R1 and our I1, pretty tricky numbers here. Uh, then I2 is going to be 0 0.0003, and we want to solve for R2. Um, that should have been a question mark. Here we go. All right, so if I plug into this equation, I've got 1 over 0 0.0003 equals r2 squared, which is what I'm trying to solve for, all over 1 squared, which is just 1. So r2 is going to be the square root of 1 over 0 0.0003, and that works out to be 57.7 meters. So you're going to have to give up your front row seats and go to the nosebleed section if you want to uh, avoid damaging your hearing. You should probably wear some uh, earplugs when you go to concerts that are blaring real loud music. Okay, what are the sound levels for these two intensities? Uh, if you remember, we already saw on that previous chart I showed you the sound level for this. I believe it was 140 decibels, but maybe it was 120. But let's work it out and see. All right, sound level equation was beta equals 10 times the log of the intensity over the threshold of hearing, which is 10 to the negative 12th. So if we do this, so beta for the uh, 1 watt, I'll just put a 1 there, 10 times the log of 1 over 10 to the negative 12th. Uh, so the way exponents work, if you bring this upstairs, you're going to get 10 times log of 10 to the 12th. And it might have been a while since you've dealt with logarithms, but taking 10 to the power of something and taking log of something are inverse functions. So those basically cancel out, and the log of 10 to the 12th is just 12. So we have 10 times 12, which is... 120, and whenever we use this equation, our units will come out in decibels, okay? Next one, we want beta for the 0 0.0003 watts per square meter. Again, it's going to be 10 times the log, ah, log of 0 0.0003 over 10 to the negative 12th. Now, if we change this to scientific notation, we get log of 3 times 10 to the negative fourth, just about off the screen there, sorry, over 10 to the negative 12th. And we can uh, combine those 10 to the powers of, and we can get 10 log <coughs> of 3 times 10 to the eighth, because that 10 to the negative 12th comes upstairs and becomes positive 12, and then you combine that with a negative 4, and you get 10 to the 8th. If you just want to plug it in your calculator at this point, that's fine, but it might save you some time remembering some of these rules of uh, dealing with logs and dealing with um, uh, power of 10 notation, scientific notation. Now at this point, 
if this was 1 times 10 to the 8th, the log of that would just be 8. But because it's 3 times 10 to the 8th, that is a little trickier. So I would just pull out your calculator. I've got one on here. Um, come on. Turn on. There we go. That looks like I was already doing some log calculations. Uh, let me see if I can get this out of the way here so we can see. So we want to do this calculation here. So 10 times, here's your log key, just to the left of 7, if you got a TI-83 or 84. Uh, and then the easiest way to do power of 10 notation is to use this double E thing here. So you hit 3, second, comma. It's going to just type 1E e, even though there's 2 there. I don't know why. And then 8, close parentheses, hit enter, and there we go, 84.77. We can round that up to 84.8 decibels. So once again, just showing the nonlinearity of our perception of sound, we went from 1 all the way down to 0 .0003, but the decibel level wasn't even cut in half. So you'll still be able to hear that concert loud and clear way back in the nosebleed seats, uh, half a football field away. Okay, next question we're going to look at. If the sound level of a vacuum is 70 decibels at 1 meter, or from 1 meter away, what is the sound level of two vacuums from 1 meter away? And if you remember from the last one, I said whenever you double <clears throat> the sound output, uh, you just increase by 3 decibels. So we already know the answer should be 73 decibels. But there's some important concepts I want to show you here that you'll need to know if you're adding two sounds that aren't identical or if you're adding three vacuums or something like that. First thing is, is obviously you don't just double the number of decibels, otherwise we would have gotten 140. What we have to do is we have to add the intensities. So first of all, we've got to find the intensity of this guy, which is using this equation in reverse. Beta equals 10 log i over i naught, or 10 to the negative 12th. So now we're going to plug in beta and solve for i, which is a bit of a pain, particularly if you don't remember how logs work. So let's just rearrange this equation for i once, and then you should write it down, and then you're done. So first thing we do is divide by 10. So we're going to have beta over 10 equals log of i over i naught. And how do we get rid of this log? We don't have an inverse log per se, but the inverse function is, as I mentioned earlier, is raising something to the power of 10. So if I do that to both sides, I have 10 to the beta over 10 equals 10 to the log i over i naught. And these things essentially cancel each other out. <clears throat> so I end up 10 to the beta over 10 equals i over i naught. And then if we multiply the i naught to the other side, move things around a little bit, we get our equation for intensity, which is the threshold of hearing times 10 to the beta over 10. Write that puppy down. It's going to be useful. OK, so now I can plug in 70 here for beta and then just go right ahead. So I'm going to have i. i naught is 10 to the negative 12th equals, uh, not equals. Go away. Come on, eraser. Well, yeah, there it went. Okay. 10 to the beta, which is the 70 over 10. So this becomes 10 to the negative 12th times 10 to the 7th. And that becomes 10 to the negative 5th. All right, so those, that's the intensity for a single vacuum, and that's what we need to add together. So 2 times that intensity is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, I didn't ask for the intensity of two vacuums. I want the sound level of two vacuums. So what I need to do is now go back to this equation here and plug this guy back in. I know this is kind of long and arduous, but this is the only way to do it. So if you've ever given sound levels and have to add things, you've got to go to intensities, add intensities, because that's what's really physically happening, is there's energy in a wave there. <clears throat> the 
then once we add the intensities, we go back to the silly human perception equation. All right, so we've got beta equals 10 times the log of 2 times 10 to the negative fifth over 10 to the negative twelfth. And you can just jump right to plugging that puppy into your calculator and you will get 73 decibels as promised. Okay, one more calculation. We've got a chainsaw, 110 decibels at a distance of one meter. Again, use hearing protection if you're using chainsaws, eye protection too, and uh, don't cut off your hands or anything like that. Okay, <clears throat> and we want to know uh, power output. It looks like I didn't put what is, did I? Chainsaw is a sound level, power output of the sound. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I meant to say what is the or find the power output of the sound coming from the chainsaw. So if we remember our original definition for intensity, it was power over area. So if I rearrange that, power, which is what I'm trying to find, is the intensity times the area. Well, I've got the sound level, so I know I can find the intensity, and we're going to use uh, that equation that we derived on the previous problem. I not 10 to the beta over 10. So in this case, 10 to the negative 12 times 10 to the 110 over 10. 10 to the negative 12 times 10. Oops, got ahead of myself there. 10 to the 11th. So we add those up and we get 10 to the negative first, which is equal to point one watts per square meter. But that's not what we wanted, we wanted the power. So if we come over here and we plug in 0.1 for our intensity, we now have to multiply by the area. And whenever we have sound <clears throat> spreading out into air, we're gonna assume it's spreading out into three dimensions. Uh, if you're in a room, that's obviously not gonna hold true for very long before the wave will hit a wall and bounce off. So Sounds actually don't trail off quite as quickly indoors as they do out of doors, but we're always going to assume you're out of doors and things are trailing off according to our inverse square law. So this area here is the area of the sphere. So here's here's our chainsaw, and we've got this uh, these sound waves propagating out. So we want the area of this sphere with a radius of one meter. Okay. And again, the equation for the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So 4 pi times 1 squared. So this is just going to be 0.4 times pi, which is 1.2566, or about 1.3. And since it's power, these are going to be units of watts. All right, that's all. Have a good evening.